Do you realize there are a great many things about me you don't know? I'm just beginning to find that out, but I'll ask you all those important questions on our honeymoon. That'll be just lovely. Well, we'll have a swell honeymoon. Well, we can't begin till you fill out the application, dear. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll be two dollars, please. Thank you. When were you born? In a hospital. I know, but where? Middletown. Middletown, Ohio. That's my favorite town from now on. Middletown, Connecticut. Oh. And now, my pet, how old are you? Don't you know? 21? <laughs> you are a darling. Just put down 26. <laughs> That's 1912. Go on. October the 16th. And do you realize you've never even given me a birthday present? Huh? Oh. Hello? Yes, this is a license bureau. What was the name? Waring? No, there's no record of Waring. All right, I'll try. Is there a major Waring in the room? It's our turn, dear. Well, how does he know our name? Our name, isn't that lovely? Go on, go on. I'm Major Worry. Somebody wants to talk to you on the telephone. Hello? I'm sorry to break in on such a momentous occasion. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. I've been through it. Uh, there's a coded message that Mr. Hill is anxious to have deciphered. Well, can't the Bureau handle it, Baird? I'm just about to be... Oh, I see. Who oh, is it? Time you're going to be married. He knows it. What time again? What time do you suggest? I'd like you to make it, Major, as soon as you can. Considering the job you have at him. Fine. Within an hour. All right. Thanks. Who was it? That was Baird from the Secretary of State's office. They just picked up a coded diplomatic message and want to know what's in it. Nice honeymoon decoding ciphers. Well, they can wait. I'll finish this and we'll get married right away. And then we'll go back to work? Well, we'll find out what it's all about. And no honeymoon? Well, it won't take long to break down that code. No honeymoon, no marriage. Well, we'll leave right after the job's finished. No use arguing. We're still in the army. The quicker we get back there and find the answer, the quicker we'll get back here. With me, marriage and honeymoon go together, not marriage and work. Now, listen, I guess I've got something to say. Of course you have, darling. Come along. Oh, sit down, Major. Thank you. It's a low-down trick, taking a man away from his own wedding. <laughs> yeah, there I was, torn between love and duty. With me pulling for love and the lady voting for duty. She escorted me here. Start from it. <laughs> I don't think she'd appreciate that. Uh, you realize, of course, that this must be kept entirely confidential. Oh, of course. Yes. Oriental. Probably enciphered in Japanese or Chinese. Can it be deciphered? Oh, I think so. We have a record of the various codes used by most of the Asiatic countries. One of them may have been used for this message. It won't take long to check. For some reason, the secretary is very anxious about this. It was sent by the embassy of the country in question, addressed to its war minister in Asia. Well, let's hope it isn't as serious as the secretary believes. I'll report just as soon as I make anything out of it. Oh, thanks, Major. Not at all. Hello. Hello. Hi, Ray. Da, 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 da. 
Stop the music. If you can call it music, it's all off. Mmm, deserted at the altar, huh? No, only a cipher stands between us. Oh, that's nothing. Nothing, just a couple of ops and a no. Something up, Lane? Probably. Major Waring just had a call from the State Department. He's saved by the bell. I'd just like to be around the day you expect to get married. Well, I'd like to be there, too. I hope not. Oh. What? I'm sorry, sir. What's I... the rush? Well, I, uh, I was hurrying out to get some flowers for the wedding. <laughs> Where's Murdoch? Left at noon. Hasn't returned yet. Then you stand by, Loring. Right. Something important, Major? Maybe. State Department code. I think it'll break down in Chinese, Japanese, or Arabic ideographs. First, separate the ten-letter cipher words into the two-letter word Kena. Then check Kena with our records. Begin with the diplomatic codes of that country, those we've deciphered in the past. Hello? Yes. Yes, he's here. Lieutenant Murdoch on seven, Major. Hello, Murdoch. Yes, I'm busy with the State Department code. Oh? When did it happen? I was on my way back to the office, and I saw him climb into one of the official cars. You're positive he's an Oriental? Yeah. I'll be there in 15 minutes. If he leaves the house, follow him and check with me later. Come on, Roy. Right. Lane, this is important. But tomorrow's ours. But you wouldn't say positively. My word. Goodbye, honeymoon. I'll check with Murdoch. You stay in the car till we need you. We don't want to attract too much attention. Right. He's still in the house. It's the one diagonally across the street. Is that he coming out now? Yes. I think he's wise. Try the front door. I'll go around the back. Right. Door, my friend, after you've answered a few questions. It demands you We'll translate that inside. Come in. Our friend very graciously invited me into the back door. I will delay you only a minute if you have the right answers. What were you doing in that car on the Capitol grounds this afternoon? Oh, come on, what were you doing? Oh, a Sphinx. Answer the question. Cut out the gibberish and answer the question. Call Lane. Tell her to pick up Artie Johnson, the MI interpreter, and bring him here. Now, let her in, Roy. Thanks, Lane. Johnson, we'd like to get a few answers from this fellow. He either doesn't understand English or doesn't want to. I 
still be able to speak with him. His dialect is spoken in the province of Canton. What is it you wish to ask him? Find out what he was doing in a government car this afternoon on the Capitol grounds. Well, what does he say? He says that there must be a mistake, that he did not leave this house today. He's lying. Murdoch, are you sure this is the man? I'm positive. Ask him for his passport. What's he arguing about? He refuses to show his passport. I'm afraid there's little we can do with him. Nothing left except place him under arrest until he makes up his mind to talk. You know, this seems very strange. No one knew what was going on here except those who were right in this room. Yes, it does seem fantastic. Not a sound, and yet he was shot through the heart. You say he was shot? Well, there's no one in the house. Any luck? Not a sign of anyone. The back door was locked. Yeah, I tried it. There's no key on the inside of the lock. The door was open when I came in. See what you can find on the body. Lane. Yes, sir? We'll be through here in a minute, and then we'll finish that other job. That job's finished. You found the cipher? Uh-huh. Important? It may mean more work. And take it to New York. Made out in the name of Tommy Young. That must be our unfortunate friend. There's no other identification. He certainly carried a bankroll. Look at this. A cipher. And short enough to be a headache. Well, let's go back to the office and get started on it. Call Everett and tell him to report here with Greer and Anderson. Give this place a thorough going over. Loring, you call the medical corps. I want an autopsy. Hold these for the investigation later. We'll drop you at the office, Johnson. Thanks for coming along. Sorry I couldn't have been of more service. <laughs> that was Tommy Young's fault. One. Six. Seven. Five. Four. Three. Good work, Lane. Did you have Arnie Johnson translate those Orient Lydia graphs? Yes, I knew you wanted it kept within the department. That's right. Have we anything of importance on Surrey? No. Only vague reports that he's head of their secret service in America. The cipher's written up. Did you find the key? Only in this respect. That group of numbers, 213820, appear three times. Oh, we should be able to find a word or a phrase that could appear three times in a group of 16. Jimmy, do you think you can list those figures in numerical order? I sure can. I mean, uh, yes, sir. Go to it. Word on. This is the translation of that letter the Secretary of State's office was worried about. Home Office Secretary. No offer such as you suggest concerning data on Panama Canal has been made to this office. We'll follow recommendation and place matters in the hands of Surrey when occasion requires. McCotton, Washington Embassy. McCotton? That's Nikachi's undersecretary. I know. We'll check on him just as soon as we break this cipher down. of the last two figures is 43. I'm sure that isn't an accident. That means something, but what? There's that group of three that I called your attention to. See, that must represent a word in common use. A, and B, B, or some such word. If we assume that, and further, if the list is in alphabetical order, then the group 
213820 it comes far down the alphabet. T, for instance. Maybe the word the. Now, where could we find a word represented by such an arbitrary group of figures? Lane, bring me the dictionary. Yes, sir. Well, that won't do. We'll need a book with probably 2,500 pages in it. We have it. If the last two figures represent the position of the word on the page, and the first four figures the number of the page, it would take us through to 2,365. Wait a minute. Wait. This is a man's job. Joe, oh, you're marvelous. I don't know myself lately. You may amount to something after all. And you know, I'm beginning to like work. No, I do believe in miracles. Murdoch, turn to page 2138 and look up the 20th word. Wayne, you check the board. V is the word. Write the word V under each group of figures reading 213820. Page 1290, the fourth word. M? M-A. Ma. Ma? Probably somebody's old lady mixed up in it, huh? Try the next one. Page 1108, the 14th word. Somebody's old lady. Ing. I-N-G. Well, there you are. Combine the first two syllables. The word is ma-ing. Or main. Page 198, the first word. First word is bearer. B-A-R-E-R. -E now, 2168, the 23rd word. Tommy. Now, 2365, the 24th word. The word is young. The bearer, Tommy Young. Now, 2336, the 10th word. I'm expecting a visitor. His name is Tommy Young. If you ask for Siri, you'll notice to see me. It is of the utmost importance. He's a messenger of Honorable McCutin. Maine. The bearer, Tommy Young, will carry the merchandise to destination. The word is poppy. You know, it's my guess this cipher ties up with the one the State Department was worried about. You only find Maine. Tommy Young's ticket was made out to New York. That's where we'll find him. I'm going to New York and deliver this cipher to Maine myself. Please be careful, Sillard. Just have him arrested. We don't want Ming as much as we want what Tommy Young is going after. It's our job to get it. The only chance is if Ming, whoever he is, will accept me as Tommy Young. It's pretty slim, but we've got to take it. All right, I'll get you a reservation. Thanks, Lane. I'll phone you just as soon as I locate Ming. You know, I have a hunch he doesn't even know Tommy Young. Now, why the letter of introduction and the password? Hello, do you know? I want to make a reservation for a compartment to New York. Long distance operator, get me the Cypher Bureau, Army and Navy Building, Washington, D.C. Hurry the call, please. I'll hold on. Major Waring's office. Oh, hello, Philip. I've located our man. He runs a curio shop here. Take down the address. 705 Pell. I'm perfectly all right, dear. Don't worry. Is Murdoch there? Just a moment. Lieutenant Murdoch, Major Waring's on the line. Hello? Hello, Murdoch. Now, here's what I'm going to do. Late this afternoon, I'm going to Ming's Curio Shop to deliver the cipher. If it works out all right, I'll call you by 7 o'clock tonight. If you don't hear from me by that time, hop a plane and find out why. Good luck, Phil. Goodbye.
Good evening to you, sir. Good evening. I'd like to speak to Mr. Maine. I am Eli Maine. I see. If you will excuse me, I shall read it. call that instrument? It's a moon harp. He has come. You know what to do with him. Perfectly. You received the first negative? It came safely here. Tommy Young would have delivered to our destination if his courage had been equal to his stupidity. And now he has gone on a far longer journey. In another day, a second negative will be delivered to you. Then a courier will come, identified by a cipher from me, like that one. I myself will dispatch the third negative from Washington. Thus, all three will come together only in Suri's hands. And if, by an evil chance, any one of our couriers is taken, no one will be able to fathom the message he carries. And certainly, not the discerning eye of the one who waits in the shop, ignorant of the doom which already envelops him. Success depends upon our following this plan of the letter. First, send Leah to me, only for a few moments. Then I will prepare to sing for Major Wary. Your English is... Perfect. Is that the word you're seeking? Thank you. I was educated in England. It's quite simple, isn't it? Well, most things are when you've learned the facts. And if I hadn't explained? <laughs> you would have remained a fascinating mystery. And now, like a solved problem, I'm... Always able to present some hitherto unknown quality. Mm -hmm. Will you excuse me? Certainly. You know the word? The word? Oh, poppy. You know the path? I'm here? Yes. How will you know, Suri? By the word. Good. Beautiful flower. I've been unhappy every hour away from you. My beloved. Shall we leave soon for the West, as you promised? I live constantly in fear. When next I see your eyes, let them smile. Be patient. Soon our work is done, and then... There. How lovely. Follow me. I will prepare the message you are to carry.
Shall we discuss the message first? I see you were expecting me. Yes. Yes, we have even prepared a room for you. Here we can watch you, so that you do not interfere with our work. You must have a better reason than that, May. Natural. What's the matter? Isn't your coffee all right? Oh, of course. You can go home now, Jimmy. I'll wait. I don't mind staying. Besides, Major Waring might need us. Do you think he's, he's all right? Oh, I'm sure he is. I'm sure he'll call any minute. Hello? Oh, it's you, Paul. No, we haven't heard from your brother yet. I'll let you know just as soon as he calls. Goodbye. I'm going to New York. He said if he didn't telephone by 7 o'clock, I was to go to Main Shop. I'll write the address. Seven oh five Pell Street. Could I have a pair like this? I'm sorry, this is the only one we have. <laughs> it's too bad. I'd like a pair of them. Would you excuse me? My father's coming. Of course. The second one is here. Yes? I will leave him, dear, in your gentle care. You have no time for tea, father? No, my child. I shall see that it does not go to waste. It is the hour for tea, our daily custom. Would you care to join me? On one condition. Condition? Well, in exchange for your hospitality, you have dinner with me tonight. Sit down, please. We'll discuss that as we sip our tea. No sugar? We do not profane our tea. Come out, Major. We take you to a pleasanter home. What's the matter? They're closing in on you, Ming? We go now. You will not be too uncomfortable, Major.
I thought you would be honoring our friend from Washington at dinner, Leah, my child. He sent a car. The chauffeur took me to the Celestial Gardens, where he bade me wait because the master had business to attend. That is bad. But not the worst. An hour later, the chauffeur returned with a thousand apologies from the master, who still was attending the important business. Yes, Eli May. What would you want of him? I have a token for him, of jade. And the word is blossom. Come, follow me. I shall prepare the package you are to deliver. All right. Someone has been here since the rain began. The plates are gone. I'm sure I know who it was. Regrets will not bring it back, but there is someone who will. We go merely across the alley to our storeroom, which holds now a treasure of unexpected value. It is better that you remain here until we return. for your life, Major. Perhaps you too have use for it. Ming, I'm forever expecting you to speak in Proverbs. You're awfully disappointing. you your life in exchange for a letter and a packet will you write you know me you caught me in the wrong mood major your heroics are useless you all right sir? well i could do with some ham and eggs outside of that i'm all right we'll take care of that as soon as we catch up with the girl come on me what do we do about him? Don't worry, he can't get out of here. I tried. Quickly before they return. She's been back here. I had one of them tied up. You got what we want. Good work, Murdoch. How do you know? Mang tried to buy them back, but I didn't care for his price. Well, for the moment, there's nothing left but to call Captain Gilbert and have him take over, both here and in the storeroom. We'll go back to Washington with our own little curio. Are you going to take another crack at Maine? It's a waste of time. You can't make an Oriental talk when he's made up his mind not to. And with a half-Oriental like Maine, it's even worse. Lane, did you call Ollie Johnson about the translation of that letter? Yes, he'll be here. Thanks. Are you nearly ready? Just about. Jimmy, close the blinds. Yes. Ever give me that first slide. Now try the next one. Now try them both together.
Well, we'll have to find one or two other places before they make sense. But hold those until we find them. That's all for the machine, Laurie. Jimmy, open the blinds. Well, what are you making? Well, it's obvious what they've done. They've broken down some map or drawing into three or four different plates. That way they can be delivered to any destination by separate messengers without fear of discovery. Individually, they don't mean a thing. Whomever they're intended for gets them one at a time and superimposes them and has the answer. Well, they're just making it three or four times tougher. But not tough enough. Oh, hello, Johnson. Thanks for coming. Happy to be of service. You got that letter, Lane? Yeah. You think you can translate this? I believe so. It shouldn't take much time. Go to it. You know, I'm really concerned about the slides. There must be something important on them, or they wouldn't have taken so much trouble to disguise it. But somehow, some way, we've got to find the others. There's no place to start. Except Maine. No, that's useless. Yes, this is it. Listen to this. Deliver the two final pictures by applying for me at Lee's Oriental Restaurant, Ocean Boulevard, San Pedro, California. Use the same word, poppy, as with the first deliveries, which are at hand, as you know by the messenger who returns these instructions. Signed, Surrey. What? Why, well, that's plain enough. They've got two slides, but we've got the final two. And we're going to San Pedro to get those two slides. It's a chance, Murdoch. Let's take it. Call the airport. Order a commercial plane. Tell them we'll be ready to take off in half an hour. Thanks, Johnson, for your help. At any time, Major. Lane, with any kind of luck, this trip should end it. Please be careful, Phillips. I don't want to be a widow before I'm a bride. Don't you worry, my pet. And just as soon as I get back, we'll tie the knot. I promise. Happy landing. You'll need a happy break after the landing. Special flight, airline. Special flight answering airlines. What time do you estimate Pittsburgh? Estimate Pittsburgh at 135, 6,000. Take 5,000. Trip 7 is coming through at 6,000. Okay, airlines. 5,000 to Pittsburgh. Special flight, report. Special flight, report. Airlines. Prep the thing out. We can't. We may need it. Report. Airlines. Special flight. Airlines. Special flight. Airline calling. Murdoch, I wonder why he doesn't answer that call. Hmm? Listen. Special flight. Airlines. Special flight. Airlines calling. We can't storm much longer. I can't report our position so far, of course. Special flight, airlines, report, special flight. Something's wrong. Don't move. I wouldn't reach for that gun, Lieutenant Murdoch. I thought your line was curios. That's only a hobby. You should have stuck to yours, Major, and piloted yourself. I think you've got something there. The next time I will. There will be no next time. 
This is your last flight. I'll take that gun now, Lieutenant. Returning to Washington. Can you clear a course? Aren't you at San Pedro? No, this trip was a frame up. They knew just what we were doing and made us walk right into it. Now I have a funny hunch about that, too. Special flight, give us your position. Flying at 3000 at 3927 North on 9017 West. Proceed east. This is 4000. Okay, 4000. on Sunday, Miss Helen. Well, it's nice and quiet here, Sergeant. And I have a lot of things to think about. Yes. I guess I know all about that. Well, I've heard about you and the Major. I've been carrying around a little wedding gift for you. Why, Sergeant, I... I don't know quite what to say. Except this is just about the nicest thing that's ever happened to me. You know, I often get to thinking. An old fellow like me. I'd like to be serving again under him. Napkin ring. Sergeant, they're lovely. Oh, I saw them made them myself, Miss Helen. We'll both be very happy with them. You, uh, you worried about something, ain't you? Well, it's only natural to worry when you're young. I had to get pretty old before I learned that things are never as bad as you make them in your words. And what's more, they never turn out that way. I recollect the day I boarded the boat for Cuba, 98. I got to warn maybe I'd never come back to my wife, Martha. <laughs> well, sir, I came back all right. But Martha was the one that passed on. But she left me something out of her love. My little boy, Tommy. And then I got to warn, maybe I'd never be able to uh, read the little shaper like she would have. 20 years later, <clears throat> I... Yes, you know, and, and 20 years later, I was proud of the job I'd done. When he went away to another war, Tommy didn't come back. And I'm still here. I've learned that the things that I worried about are the ones that never really happened. Mm -hmm. well, I think I'll soon make my run, Miss Helen. Oh, goodbye, Sergeant, and thanks again. Major Waring will want to see you when he gets back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello, is Lieutenant Loring there? Would you ask him to come to the office as soon as he returns? This is Miss Lane calling. 
Thank you. Hello, Lieutenant Everett. Will you ask him to come to the office immediately? Yes, I know it's Sunday, but it's very important. Thank you. This is Miss Lane calling. He'll know. Hello, is Jimmy there? Oh, would you ask him to come to the office at once? This is Miss Lane calling. Thank you. Come in, Miss Lane. I'm sorry to trouble you on Sunday, but it's a matter of great importance. Certainly, if you'll make yourself comfortable, I'll be with you in a minute. Thank you. Do sit down, please. Major Waring's secretary. The visit is rather curious. She may suspect. I don't know. I shall have to find out. Be alert. Be prepared for anything. Harunu. Do not be alarmed, my darling. If I may be of service, Miss Lane. Why? I, um, I brought some letters to have translated. Some of these letters are very old. Many of them I remember having translated before. Why do you bring them to me now? I was ordered to have them translated. What is the true reason? I'm merely curious. Mainly, I think, because we underestimated your cleverness. Then I found that letter you changed the other day. Blotter. Yes, I thought of that too. Rather stupid of me. What could you expect to do coming here alone? I was pressed for time. It's when we're pressed for time we make mistakes, Miss Lane. I couldn't just sit there and wait. I had to make sure I've done that. Unfortunately for you, you have. If you've left word asking for help, do not depend too greatly upon it. After all, we're forewarned. Guard her well. We'll leave here early this evening. What you wanted most was always within your reach. The key to those pictures. Where you might have least expected to find it. Come with me. Oh, 
Well, I don't guess Lane waited for us. I wonder what she wanted. I don't know. I'll try to get on the phone. expect to see you so soon. That trip was a frame up. The men's off on this case. What are you doing around on Sunday? Something happened here? Lane called Everett and me, said to get down here right away. It was important. Well, that's funny. Where is she? Wish I knew. She hasn't been home all day. Well, what are you doing down here today? Miss Lane telephoned, sir. She told me to report here. Something's happened. See if you can get her on the phone. I just called her. Well, try again. I can't understand her not leaving a message of some kind. Hello, Sam. Hi, Hi Sam. I... I hope you like them, Major. You know about these? Oh, well, yes, sir. When Miss Helen was here, I gave them to her. And maybe she told you about it. It's a sort of a wedding present. Well, thanks, Sergeant. That's awfully nice of you. She isn't home yet, sir. You say you saw Miss Lane here today? Yes, sir. She was here this morning. I stopped by to chat a bit. I guess I talked too much because she seemed to be worried about something. Did she say what about? No, sir, she didn't say a word to me. Just went scamping around back and forth to the files with letters and things. Lane's hit it. The entire file of Oriental letters is gone. Well, we should have figured this thing out much sooner. Remember that first day we called on Tommy Young? Only those of us here in this office knew about it. And yesterday, when we decided on the flight, it was again in this office. No one else here but Johnson. He'd already left the answer, and Lane found it. Have Sam let in the personnel office and get Johnson's home address. We're going to pay him a visit right now. Come on, Sam. Jimmy, you better come along. We may need you to phone or send a message. Yes, sir. Look, Major. Look, a note from Miss Lane to Lieutenant Everett. I couldn't wait. Major Wiring may be in great danger. Almost certain interpreter Arlie Johnson is involved. Going to Johnson's home. Don't know what I can do, but must try. Follow me there. Address 1708 Ohio Street. Stop Murdoch. Morning. You and Everett better stand by. But Major, don't you think it's an order? Besides, Lane might try to contact the office. <laughs> You must leave immediately. What about her? We'll take her with us. Put the correspondence in the briefcase. Oh, I'm so sorry. Salary, the short wave set. Yes, sir, just about a minute ago. Helen was with him and another woman. They got in the car and drove off. Do you think you can recognize the car? Oh, yes, sir. It was a tan sedan to turn that corner to the right. Nice work, Jimmy. Move over.
J-C-K. C-A-C-A. Wayne was with them. They got away in a car. Jimmy and I tailed him as they gave us a slip. What did you get? This code message came through. It's probably a substitution cipher. Well, there's something to work on. It may give us an idea where they're headed for. Yeah. Well, I suppose they cleaned this place out, but we'll take a look around anyway. sure this is the key. They've made three separations instead of four. Another of Johnson's tricks. And look at this fingerprint, freshly made for us to see. Maybe it's Lane's. Now it depends on how fast we can work. We've got to find the answer in this cipher or that slide. Now superimpose this one over the other two. Why, it's a detailed map of the Panama Canal defenses. And this is their plan of a remote control system for putting the dynamos furnishing power to the motors which control the locks out of commission. If the Pacific Fleet were in the Atlantic on maneuvers and this system were put into operation, it would stop all traffic on the canal, leaving our west coast defenseless. Have a composite print made up and sent to General Whiteley at the war office. I'll phone him in the meantime. Right. You better break down this cipher into letter frequencies. It may give us a start. What did you find out of it? Nothing in the FBI files. Then I followed your hunch and checked the personnel. They're Helen Lane's prints. I was afraid of that. They've got Lane, all right. Speed's our only chance. If that invention of yours will work, now's the time to find out. Well, it's working every cipher I've experimented with so far. Well, bring it out. This may save us hours of valuable time. The cipher is a single, or even a variable substitution. This gadget will break it. Well, I hope so. First, we'll get the north indicator lined up. Now, this outer alphabet represents the cipher letters. We'll get the actual deciphered message from this circle of inner movable alphabets. Now, let's see. Uh, the first letter in the cipher message was, uh, was Z. Well. We'll start by testing all the letters of the alphabet from A on until we find out what it stands for. You mean the first combination, the first cipher word must make sense? Exactly. Uh -huh. And it will. Now, when Z is deciphered, it'll be done by a movement of this lever. Be it one, two, three, or more spaces, as they're marked in this machine. I right, go to it, Murdoch, and don't apply the brakes. Here's the prep, Major. Get General Whiteley at his home for me. General Whiteley, please. No, thanks. He isn't in, Major. Well, see that this print is delivered to him personally as soon as possible. Be sure and explain its significance. Better take ever with you and don't take any chances. I have a hunch that when this cipher's broken down, I won't be in Washington in the morning. Tell the General I'll confer with him at the first opportunity. Okay. Is there, uh, is there anything I can do, sir? Just stand by, Jimmy. How are you making out? Phil, I think I've got it. Good. Oh, it's a variable substitution, all right. This oscillating ring takes care of that. Z deciphers into D, and it's done by a movement of four spaces to the left. It's terrific, ain't it? Jimmy, go to the board and copy down the letters as Lieutenant Murdoch calls them off to you. Yes, sir. All right. Z is D. V is E. T is I. X 
is V. B is E. J is R. C is P. N is E. V is R. I am certain the envelope was put into that briefcase. Without the key, the plans are useless. It is impossible to return now and duplicate it. Leah. Are you sure you put all the papers in the briefcase? Yes, Aruno. You are aware of the reward for failure, Aruno? The woman may have it. Search her, Leah. Yes, Aruna. V is S. S is U. K is R. X is I. Deliver personally, key to canal, plans third house beyond Sailor's Tavern, Sheep's Head Bay, Surrey. That's all we need. Jimmy, yes, sir? as soon as Lieutenant Loring gets back, tell him to raise Captain Lacey in New York. Have him put some men around the third house from Sailor's Tavern on Sheep's Head Bay. Tell him Murdoch and I are flying in. And we're not taking any chances on the pilot this time. Come on. Lieutenant Loring, Captain Lacey. Third house from the tavern, Sheep's Head Bay. Waring and Murdoch flying. Flying. <laughs> Since we arrived. Fine. You and Pearson go out of the back. You take the front door. I'll go to the window. Listen, we'll all move in. Hello. Don't tell me you've mislaid it. Our methods of forcing you to talk are rather unpleasant. <laughs> You. Murdoch, let Knowles and Pearson take charge of them. Our job's done. And don't you ever take a chance like this again. After that ordeal, you deserve a nice long rest. Do you really mean it? Then I'll arrange everything. Driver. Yes, ma'am. Do you know the way to Elkton, Maryland? Yes, ma'am. Have you ever been to Elkton, Maryland? Uh, yes, ma'am. What did you do in Elkton, Maryland? Same thing you all are about to do, ma'am. Say, what is this? A question and answer game, or have you two suddenly gone balmy? What is Elkton, Maryland famous for? Well, it's a place where people go when in a hurry to get married. There's your answer. Well, darling, I think... Now, don't ask any questions. To Elkton, driver, and don't mind the speed laws. Very good, ma'am. <laughs> 